Good morning. All right. Welcome to Phoenix Seventh Day Baptist Church. I got my grandson, my sister in law, and my wife. She's here. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, let's have prayer and then we'll sing our first song. All right, shall we bow our heads? Heavenly Father, we love you. Thank you for our Sabbath. We can come together and worship you. And just thank you for your son, all the blessings that he does for us. We ask all these things in his name. Amen. All right, our first song. Oh, we need our choir director. Uh, do you want me to test to make sure I'm not too loud on here? We're all set. Okay, excellent, y'all. Okay, so um, scripture reading and prayer today. Uh, our scripture will come from Acts 2, 38, and it reads, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Before we go into prayer today, I want to ask if we have any prayer requests. Anyone? Go ahead. Yeah. Absolutely. Did you have one, Becky? Absolutely. It's terrible. And I know the Rosas will be out of town next week, right? After. Week after, safe travels for y'all. Um, general prayers for everyone here today. I'm just making a list and now announcing it at this point. And um, anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, Dorothy is mom and your nephew, Justin. Um, James, how did you have a coworker with brain cancer, Bill? Right? No. Okay. Rich, just pray for him too. All right. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Father God, thank you for the ability to gather here at this wonderful Presbyterian Church. Thank you for Jay and his message that will be coming for us today from your words and acts. We have a couple of prayers and people we'd like to lift up. First, Nick with his safe travels back to New Mexico, all of the victims of Hurricane Helene, safety for the Rosas while they travel and safety for the rest of us who travel for Feast of Trumpets. We lift up Dorothy, Justin, and my dad with their health conditions, and Rick, Rich, James, co-worker. Father, you know what's on our hearts and the things that we keep silent. We pray for everybody in our church family who couldn't make it today or extended church family who are watching out on the TV today. Please be with us and our worship service, and I pray in your son's name. Amen. You know, when we had our first song, that was my grandmother's favorite song. She just loved that song. After church, we'd go home. She'd be singing it in the kitchen while she was making dinner. I have good memories of my grandmother. Well, let's get started. Jesus was walking along the Jordan. And he hears, repent. Repent and be baptized. That was his cousin, John. You'd think that we'd hear more about him and his relationship with John, but you don't. Jesus goes down to John and he says, I want you to baptize me. And John says, no, no, you, you baptize me. He says, no, no, this is to fill the righteousness. I never did understand that. I'm not a minister. I've never studied you know, the scriptures and all the meanings. So it kind of was strange for me. But to fulfill the righteousness, 
it must have been foretold of, you know, uh, maybe Jeremiah, Isaiah. Maybe Steve can fill us in on that. So he gets baptized. Did Jesus have sin? No. Did he need to get baptized? No. When we get baptized, our old self goes under the water. And when we come up new, we're a new person. And we have new things to think about. When it says repent, what does repent mean? It means change. We are going to want to change. Do we still sin? Yeah, I've fallen many times. But I have Jesus to ask for forgiveness. Forgiveness is a gift of God. He gives it to us. We know when we've hurt somebody, we've said something wrong we shouldn't have. And you feel that, you know, I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry. Forgive me. I think of the times that uh, I've said things I shouldn't have to my wife. You know, when, you, when you're angry, sometimes you, you say the wrong things or you don't think about what you've said or, or to your kids, you know. Oh, you lose your temper real quick. When we read through the book, I like reading through Matthew. Matthew really um, gives a full life of Jesus, what he has done, what he did for us. And something I ran across, I didn't know. Did you know when Jesus told the disciples to go get the donkey, to bring him to him and make sure it wasn't ridden on? They brought two. I always, and even in the movies, you see just one. But they brought two. I said, wow, I didn't know that. And when Jesus is uh, in the garden and he's being arrested, and one of his disciples pulls out a sword and whack, off goes an ear of one of the soldiers, the temple guard. Can you imagine the ear falling on the ground, blood running down your hand, you know, and you, you pick up your ear and, oh, what, what, a, that had to be shocking. And then Jesus puts it back on just like that. That sword could have been a couple inches over and split his head open. Could have been to the other side and chopped an arm off. But it only took, you know, that reminded me, uh, our, our ex-president gets his ear shot. I was thinking, wow, God was watching over him because that bullet could have been just a few inches over and we wouldn't have him. Well, Jesus healed him, and uh, then Jesus says something that I didn't uh, really understand until you study it a little more. He says, don't you know I could have called 12 legions of angels? You know how many angels that is? Anybody? It's a lot, but guess how many? 72,000. 72,000. That would have been the whole garden full, all of the hillside. That's a lot of angels. He had a lot of power, didn't he? He could call that, and they'd have been there just like that. His father would have sent them, but he didn't call them. I'm thankful now he didn't call those angels. He went ahead and he died for us. You can read that in uh, 
Matthew 26, 53, if you want to spend time this afternoon. That just amazes me. While he's in the garden before, he's praying, and he asks his father, take this cup from me. But what does he say next? Not my will, your will, Father. He did this. The whole plan is so we can be part of his family. We're his children. He wants to take us home. It won't be long. Your will be done. Then he went and he died for our sins. You know, there, there are angels probably in this room. We don't see them. They're around us at home while we're driving. We don't see them. They're there. They are there. I know for sure because one time I was doing a job. I was in construction and I got a 42-foot ladder out. I put it on this old barn. And I'm going to paint this old barn. And I'm about halfway up. My extension ladders, they're two and two. So you have four. And I was at that point, And I heard a crack. And I said, oh, no. I wanted to reach my arms around it because that's what you usually do is hang on. No, no, don't do that because when it goes down, it'll break your arms. I need to work. So I turned around and I faced the other way and down I went. And I rolled and I rolled and I ended up in some rocks. I mean, they were big rocks. And the first thing you do when you fall is you check your arms. My ribs are okay, okay. Oh, I didn't break anything. Thank you, Lord. And the guy comes over, are you all right? You all right? And I, yeah, get me another ladder. <laughs> Gonna go to work. In Psalms 91.11, for he He'll give you his angels, and they will charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. I knew the angels were with me. And there's other times too, you know. But just like Jesus knew, God has his angels ready to step in. In a minute, in a flash. I keep thinking 72,000 angels in that garden. Can you imagine the light? The whole area would have lit up. Always remember, we can call on our Heavenly Father, and He will send His angels to help us and protect us. And there's a lot of times we need protection. Isaiah 53, 5. I started there. These are some of the things that Jesus took on from us. He took on our transgressions. He took on our iniquities. And when they beat him, they beat him. It says more than any human was beaten. Those stripes are for healing us. He took on all of that for us. God put all of our sins on him. And when he comes to take us home, it's not going to be a secret rapture. For the lightning shineth out of the east. Now, if you've ever stood outside and looked at the sky as far as you can see to the east, and far as you can see to the west, out of the east 
and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Think about that. Millions and millions of angels all waiting. And then the trumpet sounds. And the dead in Christ will rise first. And then we will gather together. We get to go to heaven first. Won't that be great? I can't wait to see my grandma. And my good friends. I've had a lot of friends pass away. And we're going to see them again. Let's be ready. It can't be too much longer. We read in Acts where Peter tells us to. Let's read that again. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus, for the remission of our sins. And ye shall receive the Holy Ghost. You know, last Wednesday we were talking about this. Uh, so many of the things we talked about was in my sermon that I was going to talk about. And I said, oh, well, good to hear it twice. When the people got baptized from John, they came out of the water and they confessed their sins. And so we talked about that. I have never seen anybody come out of the water and confess their sins. I haven't. All of the people, hallelujah, praise the Lord, amen, and they clap, and they're all happy. But I've never heard someone get up and say, you know, I'm, I'm really a bad sinner, and I needed this. But uh, it was strange. I think the Holy Spirit maybe touched people in the old days, a little different than they do now. Uh, I could be wrong, but that, that's my thinking. Last week, we heard a sermon from Steve about we're to be priests. We're to be teachers. Let's read Matthew 28, 18. I got mine, Mark. Matthew 28, 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you even to the end of the world. I like that. He's with us no matter what. Like I said, it can't be too much longer. But the thing is, too, some of you younger people may see him. And maybe some of us older ones will be in the ground. It doesn't matter. We'll hear that trumpet. And then we'll rise. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for your plan to save us. We would all be lost without you. Thank you for taking on our sins, our iniquities, and help us to grow. We ask you that we could give you our will, not, not to, for ourselves, but for you to shape it and mold it and make it after your will. Help us to remember everything we do and say and think be to your honor and your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Steve, would you like to come up and uh, talk about what we're going to do next? Thank you.
um, according to our usual pattern of doing things, the first Sabbath of each quarter is when we have the Lord's Supper, also called communion, also called a few other things, but uh, those, I think those names will work. And um, so this is the week for it. I don't know if we've thought about that in, uh, in advance, but uh, we, can, we can still do this. And so sometimes the whole, whole worship service is kind of built around that. And there can be sermons and lots of scriptures. And, and um, I wonder if today, the Lord's Supper, this Lord's Supper, which is as bread and then the cup with the juice. I wonder if today that could speak for itself. And so even without our words, I think you're familiar with, with uh, scriptures. If, uh, if you need to look while, while this is being prepared, it's pretty much prepared. But uh, look in all four of the Gospels, actually three of the Gospels, not John, you'll find a description of that Last Supper when, uh, that Jesus had with his disciples. You can also look in uh, 1 Corinthians 11, you'll find a description of what happened that night. In included in that is when Jesus told us to do this also. I think without even any any further words, we will have the bread and the cup distributed, and as we receive it, let's let's uh, know that that uh, you know, Jesus has saved us, even as we have just heard. Let's do that. <laughs> 